On the phone with us now, Florida Republican Senator Marco Rubio uh, says that people need to heed the governor's warning. Those million and a half the governor's told, especially within the path of this storm, to get out. Uh, Senator Rubio, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Uh, no, thank you. Yeah. So a couple points. There are obviously two things that are happening. There are some people that don't need to move. They just need to stay in their homes and not be in the street. Uh, and then there are others that live in areas that are calling for evacuation. It's obviously very typical. That is mobile homes, some of the coastal areas, places that are flooded. And those people need to heed those warnings. And by and large, we're seeing that. There are a couple of Florida counties on the Treasure Coast where there are still some resistant, reluctant people who do not want to leave their mobile homes. But uh, mobile homes, quite frankly, are not built to withstand uh, a category anything hurricane. So really, people should not be staying there. And hopefully, if they're watching this broadcast now, they'll reconsider their decision. Uh, not to do so because they put our first responders at great risk of having to respond if it, it is a problem to come out safe. You know, Senator, a lot of them were emailing me saying well, we'd love to leave, but uh, I don't know whether we're, what, what exactly roadway they were referring to. It could have been uh, 95 or the Florida Turnpike, uh, but it was gone to a halt. The traffic wasn't going anywhere, and they hear these stories about gas stations running out of gas, and they didn't want to be trapped. What do you tell them? Well, first of all, in many of these counties, Palm Beach, Martin, St. Lucie, uh, the uh, emergency officials in those counties are still in the process of picking people up who are in circumstances. And all of these counties have a 311 system uh, that you can call. And, uh, and there's so many of them are also now opening up 911 to those calls. But in essence, having people uh, come over and get you if you need to be at the last minute evacuated, uh, that clock and that time frame is shortened rather quickly. I can tell you traffic is actually flowing quite well in most of our interstates, including I-95 and so forth. Uh, tolls have been waived on all the major highways. Most of the people are heeding the advice to stay home. So there's still time to get out, but I can just tell you here in a couple hours that window will have closed, and these people are going to get stuck in a very difficult situation if indeed the storm continues on the track that it's on. So we're trying to do everything we can to encourage those uh, folks to move. You know, uh, maybe the reluctance is coming on the part you usually think of, you know, older folks who don't want to leave their home or find it a huge inconvenience. But we're hearing a lot of younger people, too, uh, for whom this is sort of like a generational anomaly, I guess. There hasn't been a, a hurricane that hit Florida now in the better part of a decade. So for them, this sounds like a lot of, uh, you know, weather saber rattling. What do you say to them, those who doubt that this will amount to much? Well, I think all they need to do is look at the forecast, and they can see what, where, where the storm is headed. And so in some places, like where I live in Miami-Dade County, we're going to have some tropical storm winds. But for the most part, unless you live in a really unsafe place, people can just stay home today and stay off the road. But if you live anywhere north of Palm Beach County, all the way up to Jacksonville, and, and even into central Florida, they need to take this very, very seriously. This is not a small storm. This is a big storm of Category 4. It has, brings with it a lot of rain. It's going to create a lot of havoc and damage. You're going to be without power in many of these areas for days after the storm. Um, so you don't, uh, you really cannot take it lightly. There's no reason to saddle rate. But look, I, I, I know uh, saber rattle. I mean, there's no reason to do that. I can tell you the people that do this first response work in Florida are the best in the world. Because of experience, having gone through this before, they know what they are saying. And there is a reason why they are asking people in certain places to do certain things. Real quickly, I know you've got to go, Senator, but there's a possibility that this thing skirts the, the coast, just a little bit, never hits land, obviously does quite a bit of damage, still is a Category 4 storm, but actually turns around again and hits again. How do Floridians prepare for that? Because this could be something that will be around a while. Well, yeah, I mean, I've seen some of those ensemble uh, models that uh, are available there on the website, and we don't want to think that far away. I mean, let's get through the next few days here, and then we'll see what happens. That's still far out in the future, and those models can shift. I've seen the models that have it turn around, but in essence, even if that were true, we would be doing what we're doing now, which is uh, getting ready. And uh, so let's get through this the next couple of days here, obviously, and then let's, if there's more to be done next week, we'll figure that out. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. But right now, it's a good day for people with Broward and Dade County to just stay home, and Palm Beach County and other places really heed the warnings to evacuate. You're running out of time here. You've probably got another hour and a half to make a move here before it gets very difficult to, to, to get out. Good words of warning. Senator Rubio, thank you for taking the time. We appreciate it. Thank you. Senator Marco Rubio in Florida, of course, you Floridians listening in the affected areas, you, you heard him, you've heard all these reports. I, I, I think it's incumbent to be on the, on the safe side and get out. You can debate whether those reports are accurate, maybe tomorrow.
But for now, get out. All right, we're already seeing that this is way beyond uh, just Florida. Now, a lot of you who tune in from the unaffected areas say, well, why are they going wall to wall with this? Well, leaving aside the fact that this is a, a state of some 20 million people and that it could affect, uh, if it goes up the entire East Coast, as is a distinct possibility, one third the U.S. population, it is already affecting gas prices. It is already affecting air travel. So just look around uh, with the hub and spoke system being what it is for air travel today. Chances are, if you're waiting for a plane in California, it will be delayed because of what's happening there. Stick around.